In this video, we're going to be learning how to make these two magazine spreads in Scribus. These are image-focused pages, and this is the first one, and this is the second. I'm going to go over each and show you how to put them together step by step. So let's get started. Welcome to class. The first thing you'll need to do once Scribus is running is to create your new document layout. So from the new document wizard, we will select facing pages. We'll set the size to custom, orientation to portrait, with a width of eight and a half inches or 215.9 millimeters and a height of 11 inches or 279.4 millimeters. And then set the default unit of measure. If you're looking to put something together quickly, you can set it to inches, and if you need more control of the layout, you can set it to millimeters. Ultimately, you will want to set it to something that you're comfortable with, and Scribus provides a number of units of measure to select from. Now let's set the margins. It may be a good idea to avoid using the preset values, as they may be different based on where you live. Now there is a general rule of thumb used when setting magazine layout margins. The inner margin is usually the smallest at 10 millimeters. The top and outer margin is about one and a half times bigger than the inner margin. And the bottom margin is about two to two and a half times larger than the top. And the reason the bottom margin is generally the largest is to accommodate content such as small images or even page numbers without interfering with content on the page. Working from top to bottom, we'll be using 10, 15, 15, and 20 millimeters respectively for our margins. For the purposes of this video, we'll be setting the number of pages to four and setting the first page is property to left page and then we'll select OK. When you're beginning, it may be a good idea to use the grid system or add guides. To add the grid, you can right click on any of the pages and check the box, show grid. To add user defined guides, which are a little less noisy, from the standard menu, select page and then manage guides. From the guide manager, we'll select the column and row tab and input the number of horizontal and vertical guides we want. Now, I prefer to set the number of guides to two for each so that the guides split the page into a three by three blocks that allow me to focus on the rule of thirds. Then select apply to all pages. If you happen to want to align a frame to a grid or guideline, you can set the frame to snap to your grid or guides. And you can do this from the standard menu by selecting page and then snap to grid or snap to guides. Or select them both. If you're not a big fan of the grid or guides, you don't have to use them. Just know that they're there to help you out if you do choose to use them. Now that our document's set up and we have our grid and guides added as needed, let's start putting together our first spread. The first thing we're going to do is create and add our focal image. Be sure to pick an image that is related to your content and intriguing. Ideally, you don't want to pick an image that is so busy the reader has to stop and study the image to figure out what the message is you're trying to convey. To add the image to our layout, we can either drag and drop the image from our computer and describe it, or create an image frame the size of our page and right click and select content and then get image and then navigate to and select the image. Then, if needed, we can right-click on the image and select Image, and then Adjust Image to Frame. And now, from the Content Control Panel, under the Scaling section, we'll select Free Scaling and zoom in and out as needed. Finally, if we need to adjust the location of the image inside of the image frame, we can double-click on the frame, and then click and drag the image around inside the frame. 
Now, it's arguably not required, but most large or full page focal images have some caption containing text that is slightly smaller than the main article text. Now, this is to provide additional context to the image, the main article, or provide credit to the artist or photographer and has the additional purpose of providing visual balance between the image and text between the two pages of your spread. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut by pressing T on the keyboard and drawing where I want the text frame to be with my computer mouse. And then I'll add some placeholder text to the frame by right clicking on the text frame and selecting content and then sample text. I'll set the number of paragraphs to one and select OK. As always, the decision is yours, but I'll be setting the font to the same font used in the main article to provide consistency across the spread and setting the font size to 10 point. I'll be putting the caption text into a part of the image that has a solid background so that I can ensure that the text is readable and not have to be concerned about preventing the text from disappearing if the color blends with the color in the image. For the second page, we'll add another image. Because the purpose of the spread is to act as a cohesive continuation of your article from one page to the other, it's best to select images for both pages that complement each other well and generally follow a similar theme and color. Now we can create our article's title frame. You can use whatever font you like and best speaks to the theme of your publication. Some of the most common fonts include Garamond, Badani, Arial, Times Roman, and Helvetica. I'm going to put some placeholder text in. When you add your text, try to make the title about three to five words long because it's supposed to grab the reader's attention and not provide all the main points of the article. Also, feel free to add a subheader if you feel the need to add a little more context, but again, try not to make it too long. Next, we will add our article content to the document by adding a text frame. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut by pressing T on the keyboard and drawing where I want the text frame to be with my computer mouse. Because we're placing the article in a single location, we don't need to create more than one text frame. Let's make sure that the text frame is aligned where we want it and that it's within our page margins, you know, inside the blue border. Like before, I'll be adding some sample text. And now that we have text in our main article text frame, we can add a little styling to it. As far as styling goes, the first thing will be to break the content up into multiple columns. We'll start by opening the Content Properties Control Panel if it's not already. Then open the Columns and Text Distances section and change the Columns property to 2. If we preview the page now, we should see that the main article has been broken up into two columns, but we can still take this a step further. As you can probably tell, there's not a lot of breathing room between the two columns of text and they look a little smashed together. We can fix this by adding some space around the text frames and adding a gap between the columns. So we'll select the text frame and from the content control panel under the columns and distances section again, we'll set the gap, top, bottom, left and right properties to 5 millimeters. Note that the values will be different if you're using a different unit of measure. Now when we preview our page, the article has a clear distinction between each column. Nice! The two different pages in our spread are really coming together now and starting to look like a cohesive page intended to tell a specific story. That's all for our first spread. Now let's move on to the next spread. For this spread, we're going to invert our previous design a little and start with a full page focal image. 
Now we're going to work on wrapping text around a drop cap or a large letter on the page. Many magazines like to do this with the letter V or the letter W, but I like to do this with letters that have a bit of a curve. I think it makes it a little more interesting. Now when it comes to drop cap letter selection, there's no wrong answers. Some are just a little more interesting looking than others. Also, there are no hard and fast rules for what type of font you should use. So first, we'll create our text frame and enter the letter R and select our font. Then we will convert our text frame to an outline by selecting our text frame and right clicking and selecting convert to and then outlines. Now the text frame has been converted into an object that we can manipulate like a shape or polygon frame. So if we want to resize the letter, all we need to do is click on the letter and resize it using the control nodes. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. And let's put it at the top right corner of the page with a little bit of the letter hanging off the page. Then we'll create another text frame and add it to the right of our letter and give it a little bit of an overlap. Now we'll add some placeholder text to our text frame. And then we'll right click on our letter and select level and then raise to top. This will put our letter on top of the text frame we just added. Then with the letter selected, we'll open the properties control panel and under the shape section, we'll select the text flow icon for text flow around contour line. It kind of looks like a red diamond. Then we'll select edit. The nodes control panel will appear and we'll select the checkbox for edit contour line. Now we'll be using the nodes control panel to tell the text where it can versus where we don't want it to go. For our letter, we don't want any text to appear in the center. We just want the content to wrap around the outside of the shape. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the icon to increase the size of the path by the shown percentage one time. Then select the icon to delete nodes. It looks like a dark block with a minus sign at the top of the nodes control panel. Then going back to the shape in our layout, we'll use our mouse to click on each node we want to remove in order to adjust the contour line to our liking. And when we're done, we can select OK in the nodes control panel. We should now see the text flowing around the outside of our letter. The next thing we're going to do is put a few triangle shapes in the corners of our page to provide a little balance to the page and make our caption text a little bit easier to read. We'll add one to the top left corner and another in the bottom right. For the other page, we're going to try to balance out the whole spread. As before, we'll be adding another image, keeping in mind that it's always a good idea to have the images on both pages of your spread follow a similar theme. For this image, we'll create an image frame and scale it and move it to the top of our page.
just below the image we'll be adding a text frame for our article content and I'll be filling it with some placeholder text keeping consistent with the previous spread. And like before, we'll only be adding a single text frame and then splitting the content into multiple columns and adding padding using the content properties control panel under the column and text distances section. I'll be splitting the text frame into two columns, setting the column gap to five millimeters and adding a top spacing of five millimeters and a bottom spacing of 10 millimeters. Finally, we can add a simple flourish to our page to help balance the page. Many magazines use simple solid colored rectangles, others use flourishes that are more elegant. Ultimately, it's up to you if you want to use them or not. For this page, we'll be adding two rows containing four black circles. The first row will be vertical. The second will be horizontal and placed above the page's main image. We'll scale them a little so that they're not too big or too small. And finally, I'll be adding a caption to this page's main image, keeping in mind that the font size should be smaller than the main article font, but should generally use the same font style. And that's about it, everyone. I encourage you to try this out for yourself follow along with this video and watch it as many times as you'd like or need. And for those that don't already know, you can use the settings menu to speed up the video or slow it down. Be sure to try some things out on your own and feel free to let us know what you're working on in the comments section. In this video we discussed how to create two separate magazine spreads in Scribus. If this video helped you or you'd like to have us cover a specific topic in Scribus, let us know in the comments section. See you in the next one.